we have a lot to catch up on. By the way, thank you for the comments on the last video that we did. Some of you guys were dicks, we had to ban a few people, but all in all, we did appreciate the constructive criticism, right? Tony was really awesome for picking up the slack. A mental health break was absolutely needed, but one of you guys said that you could definitely see this channel being like a G4 type channel where you've got like a different cast for different types of shows. That's kind of what we're shooting for. So I'm glad that some of you guys are picking up on that idea, but we've got some stuff to talk about, right? World War Hulk? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm down with World War Hulk. <laughs> it's crazy. I tell the world I'm gonna take a mental health break for a week, and then Marvel Studios is like, dump it all out there, right? It's, 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 it was probably a bad time to take a mental health break. The Batman trailer came out, right? Haven't seen it yet. I have not watched it. I wanted to, to watch it before I made a video on it here, right? But let's talk about World War Hulk, right? That's, that's, that's what we're here to talk about. Let's talk about World War Hulk. World War Hulk was legit. It's probably one of the best Incredible Hulk stories ever written, right? If you're like one of the hipster fans, it's future imperfect. But World War Hulk is just one of the absolute best Incredible Hulk stories ever written, right? So here's the thing behind this. Here's the thing behind this. We covered the whole thing on Comics Explained, right? Literally the entire run of Greg Pak, including Heart of the Monster Hulk, which is the most powerful version of the Hulk we've ever seen. Literally, this guy was smashing the dimension of Dormammu, right? Like, literally, Dormammu's sister, Umar, who runs the dimension at the time, she goes and finds Doctor Strange and is like, you gotta do something about this guy, man, because he's literally fracturing the dimensional barrier. It's like if you punch the universe and you were starting to break it. That's basically what was happening, right? Hulk was just that strong. It was nuts. It was absolutely amazing, right? So here's, here's the thing, here's the thing. So, so supposedly the movie's gonna start filming next year, right? They're gonna get the whole thing going and everything's gonna happen next year. The news came out a couple days ago as part of a big leak and apparently this leak was confirmed and so if we get this if they do it anything close to what we saw in the comics you guys are not prepared right so check this out check this out here's what happens in this thing so it all kind of goes back to the illuminati right and it kind of makes sense because supposedly we're going to see him in doctor strange 2 which would be really really cool if we did the rumors are saying the spider-man 3 and doctor strange 2 are just going to totally rework everything and if that's true it's going to be amazing i'm super excited for that but the thing about this is that this this super clandestine group serve the purpose of protecting the earth from like various threats they end up looking at the incredible hulk from his most recent tirade in vegas at the time and they say okay all this guy does is just rip stuff up. The Earth is better off without the Hulk. So like dicks, they trick the Hulk onto a ship, right? Because they're like, you're the only one who can save the people on the ship, Hulk, you gotta go and save them. So Hulk's like, okay, cool, he gets there. There's no astronauts or nothing. And there's like this pre-recorded message where they're like, sorry, Hulk, uh, all you do is rampage. So like, you gotta go. So they basically like send him flying into space. He's mad as hell, right? They send him flying into space. He was supposed to go to a peaceful world where he could live out the rest of his life uh, in just like harmony, right? Like there was literally no life on this world, no sentient life, right? I mean, I, I guess there were like animals and stuff, you know, but like he was gonna live his life like a Disney character, you know? He holds out his hand and like birds land in it, right? I mean, you, you know what I'm talking about? Like that kind of a thing, right? That was supposed to be the Hulk's life. And instead he ends up flying through a gravity well and he lands on a planet called Sakaar. Now, you guys know Sakaar from Thor 3. Thor 3, in a lot of ways, the first part of the movie is basically Planet Hulk with Thor attached to it. So basically imagine everything you saw in the first part of Thor 3, except instead of Thor, it was the Incredible Hulk. And instead of like Thor fighting Hulk, it was Hulk fighting the Silver Surfer. That's basically what happened. It was amazing. The fight between Silver Surfer and Hulk was lit. Dude, I loved that fight so much. Dude, he beat the hell out of the Silver Surfer. It was nuts. But what ends up happening, right? So Nyx the entire second half of Thor, right? After like the tournament and all that kind of stuff, the great big huge battle. So Nyx all of that, right? And start introducing these ideas that like there's basically what's called the old strong. So essentially people who can like manipulate the ground, right? Manipulate like tectonic plates and stuff like that. And so Hulk ends up getting with this girl named Kyera, who's a member of the Old Strong. They cast off the ruler of the world named the Red King, and then in turn, like, the day is saved. The Incredible Hulk's referred to as the Sakarsen. He's like the new leader of the world and all that kind of cool stuff. Turns out the ship that Hulk was sent to that planet on has a nuclear reactor. It detonates. It kills Kyera, who's actually pregnant with the Incredible Hulk's unborn son, and the Incredible Hulk loses it, right? Just absolutely freaks. So he comes back to Earth mad as hell, right? Grabs his entire entourage, right? This dude, this dude just, you guys remember that SNL skit where like Obama's just like, bam, kicks the door in? It's that, right? Like he shows up, he is 
pissed. So the first person he comes across is Black Bolt of the Inhumans, which is not impressive because Black Bolt sucks, right? Like he literally is like, I want to hear you scream, right? And like that kind of a thing. And this starts going after each one of the members of the Illuminati. The coolest thing about this is when he confronts the X-Men. Dude, it was amazing. I absolutely love that so much. Check this out. It's the craziest thing ever. The craziest, the craziest, craziest thing. I'm sorry I'm so excited, people. But it is an exciting story, man. It's, it's, man, let me tell you something. Okay, so here's the, here's the thing, here's the thing, right? So he shows up at the X-Men's house. I feel like I should just take the whole thing of the rundown from Comics Explained and just do it here, because this is basically an episode of the rundown. I feel like I should just do that here, right? Like, here's the quick and dirty, stripped down version of what we do at Comics Explained, right? Like, I think that'd be amazing. So he shows up at the Xavier Institute. Right? You have like Colossus, right? You guys know Colossus, right? You know, Osmium Metal Skin, he grows like twice the size, he's huge, right? So like, like Colossus shows up and he was like, Hulk, you need to leave. And Hulk's like, whatever, man, I'm here to see Xavier. Bring Xavier out right now. And I don't mean now, I mean right now, right? Like bring him out right now. And so like Colossus is like, no, that's not gonna happen. And so Colossus and basically World Breaker Hulk at this point get into a fight. Dude, that fight was five seconds long. It was, <sighs> he, was not prepared. Dude, Colossus gets his arms snapped, right? Like, he breaks his arms in his metal form. He's just like, bow, right? Like, Kane Marco the Juggernaut shows up and like comes running at, at World Breaker Hulk and he's like, nope, and just like uses his momentum and just sends him like flying in the other direction. And so finally, Xavier comes out. You end up realizing the Scarlet Witch took away like 98% of the mutant population. And so Hulk's like, okay, you suffered enough. But he ends up like facing, like forcing all the Illuminati to face each other, right? Enter the century. Dude, Robert Reynolds, man. Dude, this guy. The whole time, the Sentry's just sitting there just watching it all unfold. He's kind of like, yeah, man, the Illuminati kind of had it coming. Those guys are sort of dicks, right? Like, I know what it's like to be, like, cast off by the superhero community, to be ignored and disrespected or whatever, but eventually he's like, I can't stand idly by and watch this happen. So, like, him and the Hulk get into a fight, right? This is World Breaker Hulk. This guy's so strong, he stomps on the ground and shakes the East Coast. It's crazy. Like, imagine if you saw that in Infinity War Avengers Endgame. Oh my god, imagine if you saw that in Infinity War Avengers Endgame, right? Like, imagine if something like that happened, right? Like, Banner snaps his fingers, half a life comes back, and then he asks about, like, Betty Ross. And they're like, no, Betty Ross was killed in the attack by Thanos. She was not killed when he blinked out half the life in the universe, and he freaks, right? So you got, like, this great big huge battle going on. There's just, just huge conflict, you know, like the battle at the end of the movie. You hear all this stuff. Banner, like, gets that news right when this battle's going on like the middle of it all and then you hear like this roar that sounds like it would echo across the world and like the ground shakes like and I mean like it shakes multiple times like the Hulk is walking to the battlefield and the ground shakes and like Thanos goes to attack him and he's just like one shot bitch and like that's it right that, that would be Oh my God, that would be so amazing. World Breaker Hulk during Infinity War would have been crazy amazing. But nonetheless, okay, so so back on track, back on track, right? So basically what ends up happening is like Sentry and the Incredible Hulk fight to a standstill. During that time, Iron Man ends up firing off these satellites that forces Banner to revert into his current form. And then he's basically locked in a prison in New Mexico, three miles below ground. And then Jeff Loeb writes a story about the Red Hulk. But it was cool, man. Here's the crazy thing about this. As powerful as like World War Hulk is, he's got nothing on heart of the monster Hulk. Dude, this guy was so powerful, he was fracturing the dimension of Dormammu. It's like you getting so mad that like you just punch space and fracture the universe, right? I mean, it's, it was like that, right? This guy was breaking an entire dimension of one of the most powerful beings to ever exist in the history of Marvel Comics. Technically, it was ruled by his sister Umar at the time, but still, right? It's just, it's, it's crazy what was going on here. That story would be phenomenal in the MCU. The real question is, how do you take a story like that and put it into the Marvel Cinematic Universe in a way that works. And honestly, I don't really know that question. The only way to do it is like the death of Betty Ross because it ended up being the death of, of the Incredible Hulk's wife, Kyra, what he perceived to be at the hands of the Illuminati that set all that in motion, right? But like the one chance Banner had for a life of happiness was now completely and totally gone. I don't know what that catalyst would be. You could have made an argument that it would have been the death of Black Widow, but like that time's come and gone. There's no, there's no like, you know, well, Banner just now learned that Black Widow died. Okay, well like, what was he doing during like the entire final battle of Endgame? Because like, you kind of knew she was dead. Was he like, well, I mean, you know, she's probably off doing some spy stuff. Like, 
he knew she was dead. So like at that point, the the idea that like he could he could Hulk out, that time's come and gone, right? Betty Ross could potentially die, but what's the catalyst for Betty Ross dying? Because it can't be some kind of throwaway thing, or unless they build it on the idea that Betty Ross is so significant to the Incredible Hulk that no matter how she dies, that he freaks out and loses his mind. I don't really know how that's gonna work. I think it would be cool. I think it'd be awesome. I think a great callback, if they really, really, really wanna tie this in and make it awesome, a great callback would be to say, this is what Banner saw during the events of Avengers Age of Ultron. Because I've said it before, we never found out what Banner saw, right? When the Scarlet Witch was messing with their heads, we saw Steve Rogers who kind of had like, you know, a chance to actually dance with Peggy Carter. We saw that like Black Widow was reliving her time in the Red Room. Everybody had their own individual visions and it was cool to see that unfold. But you never saw what happened with Banner. I mean, Thor got his vision, but it was really more of a catalyst to him looking up the Infinity Stones because Idris Elba was like, you killed us, bro. Good going, Thor. Like it was like it was a catalyst, right, to the events that led into Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. But we never got to see what Hulk saw. I personally would have preferred to have seen him become Maestro, but I still think it would be cool if we if the events he saw was actually the events of World War Hulk. That would be great. That would be absolutely awesome because what it could indicate is that like Banner loses control of the Hulk persona, right? That that by and large, since we've seen the Incredible Hulk in the MCU, it's largely been Banner having some measure of restraint in the situation. Especially when you go into the events of like Infinity War when like he gets absolutely thrashed by Thanos and the Hulk won't come out. So he has to use Iron Man's uh, Hulkbuster armor instead. That like there's always kind of a situation that goes on there. And even now during the events or really the, the post end game landscape when you've got what's basically Professor Hulk, right? So the Incredible Hulk and Bruce Banner working in unison, that something happens and Banner loses control of the Hulk persona and the Hulk gets his, gets more mad than he's ever been and just loses it, right? I mean, that'd be a great way to bring the character in. But at the end of the day, I'm still curious, what would the catalyst be? So I'm gonna ask you guys that question, right? If something's going to cause World War Hulk to happen, What's that cause? What's the thing that drives Banner or drives the Incredible Hulk to totally take over, Banner to lose complete and total control or to possibly even give up control and gives us the events of World War Hulk? With that being said, guys, it's exciting. It's an exciting piece of news. I'm hyped for it. But thank you guys for watching. Good to be back. And I will catch you all later. Peace.